What's up bros? Welcome to another BroGraph motion graphics tutorial. I am Matt Milstead and today we are going to be going over uh, something that I've been looking for for a while. Uh, a way to uh, create multiple materials for uh, cloner objects uh, without actually having to convert the uh, cloner objects down to editable uh, and then do each individual one. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is called the multi shader. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, jump into it. Now, uh, the reason, one, one big reason you would want to do this is for architectural renderings. Um, a, a lot of architecture, if you look at bricks upon the side of the house or uh, roof tiles on, on, on uh, a roof, you'll see that not every single one looks exactly the same. There's little variations within all of them. So <clears throat> the multi shader allows you to be able to take multiple objects and apply those different uh, uh, those different either images or colors or uh, noise maps, whatever, uh, to the individual uh, each individual object uh, very easily too. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. What we're gonna do today is we're going to uh, pretend like we're creating some uh, some shingles for a roof. Now most of the time if you're doing some architectural rendering where it's very far away this method wouldn't be great specifically because you are this would be a lot of faces and a lot of polygons uh, a lot of useless polygons that you don't really need to do. You can actually just create a plane and then put a texture on it. But this, if you're going to be up close and you kind of want to see the detail of it, um, <clears throat> this will kind of show you a way to quickly uh, uh, texture it, uh, each of the individual shingles. So uh, we're going to go ahead and bring that down to about, uh, I guess that should be good. Let's make it a little bit thinner. All right. And then we are going to... Uh, Go into MoGraph and do a cloner object and drop that cube into the cloner. And we are going to do linear for this first one, and you'll see why here in a second. And along the, excuse me, the Z axis, let's go ahead and do about six. Because <clears throat> I've gone ahead and pre made six individual little images that we're going to use. So. Let's get these kind of close. Do 79.2. That way we've got a little gap in between. All right. Now we've got that. Now let's take our cloner and make a duplicate of it. Uh, you can either click on it and hit Control C, Control V, or you can hold down the Command key and drag up, and you'll see it makes that copy. Now on this, we are going to take this cloner and we are going to stagger it a bit about to halfway <clears throat> all right and then we're going to bring it up just a little bit all right now with these made we're going to take these two cloner objects and group them together into a null uh, the keyboard shortcut is alt G on a Mac, I'm not sure about a PC. And then we are actually gonna throw this into a cloner object as well. Now I know it seems convoluted, and you're asking yourself, well why couldn't I just make a grid array? Well, first of all we have to stagger them, and that really is where that comes into play. Now if you were to create just a whole bunch of individual cubes once, and then do a cloner object of those, it doesn't work that way because um, it would each of the shader would put it on the whole group of the cloner object, if that makes sense. Um, so on this one, we're going to go linear again. We're going to go along the Z, nope, the X axis. All right. <clears throat> and then we are going to bring the position no not the position we're going to do the rotation along the 
B to about, let's see, what do we want it to? About one. I think that should, actually, we want it to be negative one because it will be going down. Yeah. So now we've got them overlapping like that. And so if you were to render, you'll see you've got all these overlapping tiles, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Now <clears throat> comes the fun part. Uh, well, let's create a new material. And within the color, we're going to go to Texture, MoGraph, and Multishader. Now Multishader will bring up, uh, if you click into the, um, the actual little white box here, it'll bring these up. Now, these are individual textures, basically. Um, so let's go ahead and add a couple. We're going to do six total. And within each of these, you've got the same as you do with every other, <coughs> excuse me, every other um, material. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to load an image, uh, some that I've already made. Um, tile one, no, load image, tile two. Oop. Load image, tile three, load image, tile four, two more. And what's great is this will even work with bump maps as well. So if you were to do a multi shader on your bump map, it would do a bump with each one of these multi shader uh, elements that you have within uh, these. And then tile six. And then that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and change our specular since it's like that. Do that. No reflection, won't worry about it. And we won't do a bump right now. Um, but just so you guys know, you could do the. Actually, you know what? What the heck? We'll just go ahead and make a bump and we're going to grab this texture and just throw it in there because it's black and white already. So that'll give us a good bump material. <coughs> All right, now within this cloner, you can't just throw it on the cloner. Uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hit C to bring up all the individual nulls. So you've got all these other cloner objects. Now, it, it saves you time uh, uh, by doing it this way. You see we've got six rows uh, versus having to do each individual one and then making those editable, and then so on and so on. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drop this into each cloner object. And as you can see, it doesn't look any different yet. What we're going to do is on each one, we are going to do an effector and a random effector. Now, I like to stay organized, so I'm just going to do the hierarchical of that <clears throat> and just put it above the cloner that I'm uh, uh, manipulating. So on this random, um, what you want to do is you want to unclick position, scale, and rotation. The only thing that we are going to be messing with on this is the color mode. So turn that on, and you can see it's already started to change some. So let's go ahead and do this again. Effector random. Throw that there. And then on this one, unclick position, turn on that. And now, since we don't want these to be uniform, we just go into our effector uh, tab and we just change the seed to however we like it. And then click on the next one, random. <clears throat> uh, random, we want the position off, on, and we'll change the seed until we like it. That looks pretty good. Grab that one and once again, random <clears throat> perimeter position vector seed let's go down with that oh forgot to turn there we go let's turn my color mode on there we go and now cloner mograph effector random <coughs> oh excuse me I'm still getting over being uh, being sick all right uh, random on position off Vector, let's go see just a random one right there. That looks good. And then this little last one right here. Low graph effector random. Let's move that. 
random change the seed position and we want the color mode on now as you can see <clears throat> that looks a lot more realistic than just throwing a regular texture onto a uh, onto a, a, a plane so you can see and we've got this randomness of all the individual uh, textures which is pretty cool so you know what I'm actually gonna up this to best then do my output as 60 by 9 whoops there stop yes and then we'll render it there and you can see there we go that's a lot better all right and that's basically it um, the multi shader it's uh, uh, I believe in 3ds max it's called the uh, I'm gonna get this wrong too uh, sub object material shader or something like that <clears throat> basically it's the this is what I've been looking for for a while when I've been doing my uh, architectural renderings so anyways uh, that's it for this one uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter uh, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube page uh, I this is Brograph I'm Matt Milstead and we will see you next time thank you